Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's as simple as pressing subscribe, tapping that bell and making sure to select all to receive all of my future postings. So here is a picture of our front door when we first moved in to the cottage last year. And as you can see, it um, needs a little bit of updating and the hardware is old, which I love, but for security reasons, we did have to go with a newer hardware. But I knew I wanted to keep the door itself because it's 81 years old and it just needed some cosmetic work. We just didn't realize what we were in for to achieve this. And as you can see, the doorbell off to the side, we wanted to change that as well. I wanted to go with my signature color black on the front door. And I'm very excited to share the transformation with you all on the front porch. That being said, Let's begin, shall we? So anyways, we started by putting some citrus strip on the door and wrapped it. And then the next day, you take the wrap off and it makes it easier to remove all the many different layers of paint. As you can see, it just comes right off. There's so many different layers of paint on this door. I mean, you have to think this is an 81 year old door and it's been painted several times throughout the years. So now we pretty much took off as much layering as we could. And what we just continued to do was, um, you know, again, scrape off as much as we could and then smooth things down with um, sandpaper. And then we used this uh, Dremel uh, tool to get closer into the glass pane area. And we really secured the glass so that it wouldn't shatter because that would just, that would have been a nightmare having to replace the glass. So we used this um, reinforcement strip here over um, the open areas and some are going to stay open because of the new hardware. So it's again, it's a reinforcement patch. And now, as you can see inside the door, it's hollow from all of the hardware a reinforcement patch at the bottom, but we had to fill the inside of that hollow hole where the old hardware was. And we are gonna be using some spackling. Not so much to fill the hole, but you'll see in a moment what we use the spackling for. So we're placing that over the reinforcement patch so that we can put on our new shiny hardware. 
It's by Quickset. And this was actually purchased from Lowe's. Here's a template that we used to get proper placement for the hardware. Thank goodness for templates. They do make the work so much easier. That hole's gonna line up right where it needs to be for the long handle. So as you can see, we are adding on some of this spackling over the patch. There was just so many different steps in the process for this door. We didn't realize it was going to be so much. I mean, it's, it's easy to just say, oh, you know, forget it. You know, we'll just go buy a new door. But no, Bev wanted to keep the original 81-year-old door, so. It really took some time to finally finish this project. But when you have those open holes, whether it's in doors or, or ceilings or walls, the reinforcement patches are amazing to work with. Okay, so right here, as I was saying, we had a big open area because of the previous hardware. So my husband put a cedar plank in there and then closed it up with some wood putty. We had to make sure that it was nice and solid in the door for the new hardware, otherwise it just, it, it would not have been able to be placed on to the door. So we gave it a good cleanup with some soap water and as you can see there's a lot of pitting inside the paint quite a bit and i didn't want that and again that was from all the years of painting so we just filled it with some spackling paste and then sanded it down to make it smooth again many different steps for this door and we did the same thing the best we could around each little pane and this is where the fun started with fine paints of Europe there there, uh, there is no other paint that can even match up to this gorgeous gorgeous paint So when you work with this oil paint, you can only apply it three to four inches at a time. Otherwise it can drip and it just, it won't set. So this is a, this is, it's a self healing paint is what it is. So you paint it and then it just settles on its own. And this right here that you're seeing, this isn't even the paint. This is just the primer. It's such a, a high gloss um, look to it. it it's gorgeous. You cannot notice where 
you have started painting and where you have stopped because it is again a self-healing paint it just settles on its own and again this is just the primer we'll be going over it with the paint although we didn't we don't have the video on that part and the reflection off of the paint is just beautiful. It's worth every penny. And there's quite a few pennies for this paint right here. <laughs> Now we're moving on to our security storm door. This came with the home. And as you can see, um, it has seen better days. The black is very faded. And there's um, like speckles of paint all over it as well. The hardware has definitely seen better days. And then I believe these are called kick plates. We are going to keep this. We're just gonna clean it up a bit. And see all those little paint specks. It was from, um, you know, previous paint jobs on the home and it was just um, never cleaned up. So we're gonna take care of that. And again, the door is just, the paint is just very faded from the sun beating down on it for so long. But the door, the structure itself is very solid, very intact. So we just decided, you know, let's just go ahead and just fix her up a little bit. We don't need to buy a new um, security door. So first we started things off with putting on some primer. And then I did go over and smooth things with some sandpaper as well. And I went over the door twice. Now this is where all the pretty color comes in. I actually, now these were purchased earlier on in spring, the daffodils, and there are some tulips and pansies are in here and some creeping Jenny and ivy. You will see ivy coming out of my concrete pots. Very excited about that. And I'm going to be working with these two concrete planters that were purchased from Lowe's. And I want you to pay close attention to this picture. I'll be using Potting Mix uh, miracle Grow. This was purchased from Lowe's miracle Grow does just that it works miracles makes your flowers nice and pretty nice and full healthy and black cow this is a must for me there's nothing like using that good old cow manure in your garden beds and pots So I try pretty much using almost like a 50-50 and I added um, them in my pots up front. Those were purchased from Lowe's as well. I'll be adding in some ivy and some pansies.
Everything right now is pretty trial and error for me. So you can see here, and it's later on, I was not able to get the spring when they were in full bloom. So the tulips are gone, but the daffodils, the stems are still there. It's as simple as just plucking them out. But all of the leafy green coming from the daffodil, I'm gonna keep that in place because it makes for a nice uh, cottage core feel in the planters. And I'm gonna add something right here in the center. So I pretty much have them cleaned up and when the pansies, when they die off, it's just as simple as going in and deadheading them, you know, taking the stems off. The creeping jenny is growing nicely. I like to make sure I pull it out over the pot. I keep some growing within, but I want that pretty cascading going down. Now I'm ready to fill her up. Now aren't these just lovely? Beautiful, beautiful burgundy color with just the perfect kiss of creamy yellow on the edge of all the leaves. Such a delicate and fabulous plant. I will be placing that right in the center. It is called Columbine. And it matches perfectly with the pansies. Again, pay special attention to the patio. It's all just very old looking it needs it needs some pizzazz everyone so i'm gonna i'm gonna bring it back to life i'm gonna make her nice and shiny and pretty by using aqua mix now this is for those of you that have not seen um the makeover of my fireplace i use the same exact product you just get a, a brush and just apply it over your stonework and then you wipe things down with a cloth afterwards and as you can see what it what it does here it gives your stone a nice warm and rich color to it not so washed out and it's so simple you just brush it over back and forth but again make sure you wipe off all the excess oil because the stone can only take in so much of it and then the rest will just sort of stay there. And then after about, oh, I would say 24 hours, it's safe to um, spray it down. Just get all that excess oil off. And then I decided, well, <laughs> since, since I'm putting it on the patio, I might as well. Look at that. Nature always finds a way. That little ivy growing out through the stone. But anyways, the planter pots, I thought, well, let's get to conditioning them as well. Give them that nice, wonderful, warm feel. 
and look at the difference. It will stay looking just like that. And you have to, well, depending on how much sun it gets, um, I might have to go back over it in a year. But I mean, what a difference. It really highlights all the different colors and textures. And you do the same thing, you just wipe it off with a cloth when you're done. Such a difference. And then having the warm color on this pot when the creeping Jenny comes down, having the light green yellow color on the warm rich color on the stone on the concrete it's just beautiful it's all about warming for me anyhow i like making everything warm warm tones because then when you add the light colors it just really pops and makes things so inviting. And here is the door up. She's just glorious. I absolutely love my front door. Look at all those panels. Just, uh, I cannot wait to put some color. <laughs> up against this black door. I mean, wow, such a high gloss that this paint puts out. The hardware, perfect, perfect choice. Now the mailbox, that is going to go. I'm gonna find something sweet. And then I added one of my green boxwood wreaths on front of the door. I do have a video showing how I made this wreath. Just recently too, this spring. And that green on the black is just beautiful. Everything has just grown and it's now cascading over the pots, all the creeping Jenny. Such a beautiful color. And the pansies. And you see the daffodils. You see some of the green from the daffodils still in there. And then the columbine. When making planters, I, I try not to have everything um, so tidy. I want all my item, all my plants to mingle. And I added in some votive stakes, little votive tea light stakes. During the evening, it's always nice lighting a couple of tea lights out on the front porch. This side is really grown up because it receives more sun. And in these planters, I also use the, Mir the Miracle Grow and the Black Cow as well.
And now we have the, the security screen up. And now it's all shiny, new, and beautiful. We changed the doorbell to the ring system, which we absolutely love. Again, the mailbox will be changing <laughs> without a doubt. And now to add in some special whimsy feels Mackenzie Childs. I love the frog prince mat. It is my most favorite out of all of her mats. Now sometimes during her barn sale you can find this mat at 50% off and I heard she is having one this year, a barn sale. So keep a lookout for it. 